All right. Okay. All about the caddis today. Caddis. Prime you know, time on the Columbia. Always prime time on the Columbia is always in July. July yeah. is always, you know, ideal for the caddis. Now, the caddis here can vary. They can be real small, like 18s, like little guys, or the ones we're going to hopefully have today, size 14, size 12. So something big. Of course, you always start with a pupa, so make sure you have caddis pupa. Fish just goes <laughs> right there. So we are going to get some dries. And later on, you know, it's always the evening hatch, right? Yeah, that's right. Usually, well, when yeah. the clouds come over and that, the caddis come out. So, so we got the caddis pupa. We got our dry fly carpet caddis. So that's today as we take a sport fishing. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. cast out there well that's pretty sweet you know we knew they're up there the problem is this current is nasty it's pulling all over I'm trying to keep it out of the motor oh and it's another nice fish and what we're going to show you a little bit later is how we're fishing of course you know we got these beautiful back eddies in the river right now when the water's high and the fish come in here to feed and they feed heavy when the casts come off it's the big hatch of the year. You know, you get the odd secondary hatch of mayflies, but the big hatch is the caddis, which we're focused on today. And here's a good start. Not a, not a huge fish, but, you know, pretty. You know, those are kind of what you're going to get. Oh, look at He's got the bad fin. The guy's got the bad fin on the other side. So what I'm going to do, whoa, I'm just going to unbutton him, and I'll show you the the fly we're using, I'll try to get him out. It's right in the top lip, like we do when we get him when we're hanging. But there he is there, he's a nice bow. Yeah, look at, he's got the, got the one bad, one bad fin. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, come on. There he goes, off he goes. So, there it is. So this is Don's, Don's caddis pupa, right there. And you know, the key with the caddis pupa is it has to really look translucent. You want to use materials that are very, very bright underneath. So I've got a really cool chartreuse rib I put on there that gleams underneath, but that overdubbing the forms, it kind of covers it and it's translucent so you can see it gleam through there. And the fish love it. And you'll see, well, if we do a throat sample on some fish later, we're going to show you the size. I mean, this is a little bit of a cheater. It's a little bit big, but it's, they're still going to eat it. It's still effective. Good start. So now we got to get a few more. All right. Oh, yeah, gorgeous oh. fish. Hey, pupa's the oh. way to go, I'm telling you. The tank. Yeah. yeah. Until the dry starts, you know, you got to have those pupa. Well, they're definitely coming in the pod because we both cast in that hole or that same seam. Yeah. Double yeah, header. Man. Boom, boom. Oh, this Double guy's header. There. Oh, oh, I missed him. Oh, the big fat guy. Oh, <laughs> that's a beauty. Oh, okay. Pupa? Yeah, they oh, take okay. those pupa just like a little chronomid, don't they? Yeah. Oh, he's out. Hey. Get him my. Pupa out of my thumb. <laughs> ah. Good thing they're barbless. Yeah. I'm gonna pull them out. Oh, that's a 
a nice fish. Oh yeah, gorgeous. Nice fish, eh? Beautiful. Hey, we'll let him go. There he goes. There he goes. Blood yeah. from the pupa. The blood from the pupa. <laughs> stuck right in his. <laughs> it came shooting out of the fish and into the into my palm. Double header though, pretty cool. Oh, right, is it floating in there? Both are bobbers, boom, boom. Yeah, very cool, look at that. Beautiful. And then them jumping around all those over. Those are those that. back eddies, that's where we're fishing, all into those little pockets. And we'll show you, you cast out there. You can use an indicator if you like. You don't have to use an indicator. You can actually have it naked, just on a dry line with a long leader. Just run it through those seams and hang on. Another beauty out in the flow. What we're finding is really cool. There's a, there's a nice flow coming back into the main seam. And every time Dale and I get it going into that, that nice flow, right, just floating nice and easy, we're just getting hit after hit. And all gorgeous fish. So recommended setup that we like. There's two setups you want to have. You want to have a six, six weight, 10 footer that I like for the indicator. And then of course a five weight, nine foot for the dry. And we'll show you that a little later on when that comes on. But right now, it's all about the nymphing. You know what we better do, eh? Is maybe a throat sample. Yeah, throat sample them and show them the little. Yeah, we should. Uh, should be some throat caddis sample. pupa in there. Should be some pupa in there. Yeah, this is a good fish to do that. Let's get this guy in. I think he's ready. Man, they're uh, they're tough fish. And again, you know, five six weight rods. You don't want to go too small. You know, you want to get the fish in. You don't want to wear them out. So we've mentioned it many times on the show. You know, four weight works, but. I like the bigger rods better. Oh, look at this guy. He's he's nice. Look at the colors on him. Beauty. Wow. And the beautiful, wow. spectacular beautiful colors. Spots. Where's the fly? Right. Right in the top. There it flies out. There's our there's Don's little. And you know, I've lost the rib on it. The rib I put on there. Now I'm gonna have to change it. I sometimes I was using a real chartreuse ultra wire, but it didn't, it wasn't fat enough, so I changed it over to this really cool material, but tends to break a lot so you know what we'll do before before I release this fish or do a throat sample let's go to the bench and I'm going to tie you up Don's caddis pupa. Today on the bench I want to tie you up Don's caddis pupa. Now caddis pupa are pretty easy to tie but I've got a cool trick that I'm going to show you on this fly that uh, really accentuates the rib on this pattern and makes it highly effective so make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we use a size 12 curved caddis. We'll tie with some 6 aught black thread. We use a 7 64th inch black nickel bead for the bead, some light olive quick dub for the body, number 10 peacock orange mylar for the rib, and some peacock hurl for the thorax. So to start the fly off, I've put the bead with the small diameter hole towards the eyelet, and it's on the hook. We're just going to take our thread and tie it on. Now take a piece of your mylar, and this is important. You want to put it so that it's the orange side towards the hook, the green side facing you, and then tie it in along the shank of the hook, all the way halfway down the hook bend, because we want this pupa to really be curved. Now the ribs tied in, take a piece of your quick dub, and it's on a rope, so it's easy to tie in. Wrap it right back, right to halfway down the hook bend. Now we're going to take our quick dub and just wrap it forward. And as you wrap it forward, just slightly pull back on the material because this will pull this material out nicely when we uh, brush it out a little later. Now that we have the body tied in, take some hackle pliers. Clip it on to your mylar and then just turn it. Keep turning, keep turning until you're forming a nice green rope for the rib. And you'll see at the very end, you get a, if you do it right, stop and you get just a little bit of bronze at the very end. A bit of that orange color sticks out, and that we're going to screw wrap in for the butt. Now that you have the, the rib wound, we're going to take one wrap behind, right at the very butt, and that's a nice copper wrap. This is a really good hot spot. And then take a few wraps up the fly, you know, usually four to five to form a rib. Now that we have the body tied in, I'm going to take one peacock curl and just one and put it right at the top, tie it in and wrap it forward to form the thorax. 
finish fly off I'm going to take my whip finisher and do a few whips right behind the bead just lock it in place and then I'm going to take my my dubbing pick and just pick out that dummy and be careful not to break your wire your rib but just pick it out lightly so there it is the finished Don's caddis pupa now all caddis pupa look very similar they have a very bright rib this rib is perfect. It gleams in the sun. It's nice and green. Plus, you get that nice orange butt at the bottom. And I find that orange butt is a nice hot spot on this fly. Deadly little caddis pupa. Make sure you have some in your fly box. Got my throat sample there. Just gonna hold them up for everybody just briefly. Real long and thin, you know, coming off the coming off the spot. Oh, there he goes. And again, never grip the fish. So let's see what we got. I just put it into my hand here. Got some water in there. So, oh, look at that. Wow. So check it out. Look at all the, look at all those caddis pupa. Little ones, so they're feeding on midges. So look at, he's got little tiny, size 20 midges. Got some little flying black ants. So you need some black ants. And there are all the caddis pupa. Right here on my hand. There's a decent size. But so, you know, we could tie it. We could tie them in a size 18. I've even tied them in a size 20. It's painful. You know, again, I like a size, I tie it on a size 12 hook, but it's cheater. I cheat on it, so it's a size, well, actually, I tie it on a size 14. Makes it real nice, like I showed you on the bench. And then you don't have to get too big, but not too small. It's kind of in between. So these are real little guys hatching now, but later on, you know, we might get some bigger ones hatching. So all these little caddis pupa, normally I'll see ones you know, three times that size or even double that size. So look at him, he's just feeding on everything, little midges, everything. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. move on to the next hole yeah I think so you know, that's the beauty of the river we come up we do the hit and run we're in here for an hour or so plugged a bunch of nice fish all the feeders then you just carry on to the next hole if they go off a little bit plug in the next one get all the aggressive feeders and move to the next hole yeah, lots of river to fish and, and the beauty is we'll head up you know we're heading up towards Cal Cigar we work that area and then we go all the way down to the border yeah, you know we've got a ton of river to ton fish. Of river so it's you know again you get those aggressive like anything there's those aggressive feeders they go off a little go to the next hole get the aggressive feeders again it's perfect yeah look at that leaving that beautiful run that we got a lot of fish in another one of our favorite holes so we plan to hit about three or four holes to show you a little variety today. And really what happens is when you come out, start at a hole, if you don't catch a fish, and this is true for every hole in the Columbia, if you don't hook a fish in the first 15, 20 minutes and you're working the hole, like you know, you got a good flow and you're working the hole right with a nymph, you gotta move. Because this river is notorious for fish feeding at different times. They will work one hole, there seems to be a hatch in one area, you move down river like five, 10 minutes and there might be no hatch at all or vice versa. So you gotta keep moving. Oh, look at this one. You know, some of these holes are our classic holes and they hold big fish. This is one of the, this is one of the big fish holes. And this hole is up a little closer to Castlegar, BC. You know, we'll work all the, down, all the way down through trail, all the way up. And again, that was on, uh, you know, that uh, nice little caddis pupil we showed you. You've got to have some of those caddis pupas. Hey, Dale, like they're Yeah, they're, they're good. Look at the size of this ah, that's guy. That's a beauty. Oh, he's a nice fish. Just chrome down there. Oh, you know, we haven't nice seen many rise here, but we know they're up. Oh, man, look at that. Oh, he's a fatty. That's a classic Columbia rainbow right there. And I'm using a pretty stout tippet. You know, I've got seven, seven pound test from the uh, swivel down I've got a small little swivel on and there's the other setup too is you got to vary the size of your swivel in here I like a real small swivel because I want the fly really 
you know, kind of acting naturally. Sometimes we'll even use bigger swivels with, with weights on them to keep them right in the zone. Look at this guy, he's huge. Oh, oh man, there he is, oh, got him. Wow, look at the colors on this fish. There's a little, little pupa, get him out of there. Oh, gotta hold this guy up, wow. Look at this fish. How is that for, for a chunker? You know, 24 says, you know, 20, 21-ish. Look at the size of that. Look at the colors. Look at how dark the spotting is. Let's let him go. Oh, man, look at that. Oh, gee, gone. So what I did, too, is I took some water temperatures before we came out. Normally, this time of year in July, it's 64-ish, you know, uh, Fahrenheit, around around 16, 17 C. Right now, it's crazy. We've got 58 Fahrenheit water, which is pretty cool. Uh, we're getting some hatches, you know, the caddis are starting, but normally it's a lot warmer. So this year is just being a cold year. That COVID year, well, as you can tell, the COVID hair, it's just being a cold year, right? So we've got to, uh, got to work it harder and see, but at least they're up. That's good. That's, That's a good, good. sign. Well, the difference was there is look at, I shortened up. We compared to yours, because you had hooked those fish, and I was right beside you, wasn't getting anything. And you said, let's compare our rigs. Yeah, it was the most bizarre And I was thing. just like, I was two feet lower than you, and that was the difference. Yeah, and I had to go fly and everything. Yeah, just the two feet difference made all the difference. In, wow. There. there he is. Oh, nice fish. Oh yeah, he's nice. Oh. oh. <laughs> It is tough to, to try a net on your own. It is. And a nice one. Oh, yeah. Another gorgeous fish. A nice, healthy fish. Yeah, you get unbutton them and... Yeah, those little, those little pupa are working good. They are, aren't they? Yeah, with all the... Wow, we well, saw we it got the, the We got the pupas, we got the pheasant tail nest, right? Yeah. We use all the different yeah. patterns, but that little caddis pupa is a winner when the caddis are coming off. Definitely. Match the hatch. That's the bottom line. Let's see nice this guy here. fish. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at the beautiful colors. Wow. Just chrome, eh? Yeah. Nice. Aren't they nice? Yeah, and some have right. lots of spots and others there's not as many spots. Yeah. Eh? They're definitely different breeds. Yeah. Kay. Okay. Go let them go. I'll let them down here. Just a little bit of crap. Yeah, so a little adjustment made all yeah. the difference. Well, that was it. Wow. Because you had caught two or three fish in yeah. the same exact spot, and we said, let's compare the rig. Yeah. And it was just, I was two feet hanging two feet deeper. Wow. It can be very subtle on here. Yeah. We've seen that numerous times. Have we ever? Just little adjustments can make the difference between success and failure. <laughs> <laughs> Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop. Maui Jim sunglasses and Hardy rods and reels. So we got a little break before we hit the dry fly. So we're down in one of our favorite holes and you know we got about an hour probably until 6, 6.30 before the dries come off. So I want to show you Don's secret box here. Uh, it's the fly box we use on the Columbia and this is all mainly for the spring and the summer. You know, when the, uh, the pupa, the emergers, the caddis, the mayflies, all that, they're coming off and here they are. So these are the ones I use the most. I use a few of these over here. You know, these are some chronomid patterns, springtime mainly, you know, some bead heads, some other things like that. But these are the, these are the main ones here. I've got the, the caddis pupa, the various caddis pupa. We've got a lot of these, uh, these jigs that I tie on. So I've got a bunch of the jig head emergers these other jig head emergers here, those are the ones you need. And make sure when you come out here, everything's pretty small. Like even the mayflies coming off, size 16, the caddis 16, maybe the odd 14, but usually pretty small 16. So when you're fishing these emergers and the pupa or the pupa emerging, and also the, that top water stuff, keep it small. Don't use too big. You know, you can get away with the big stuff early, but then you got to get smaller 
as the season progresses because the fish get smarter. So again, these are all my favorite patterns. Try to get a good look while you can because uh, they work out here. Wow, look at that. We're in this back little channel. They're rising in here, but he wouldn't take my caddis dry. So I just uh, sunk it, fished it like an emerger. And he came and ate a big fish in here too. They're just- Yeah, look at them sipping. They're just yeah, they're sipping just in, in this the calm back. water, which is really tough. But, but you know, we got a small pattern on, right? The small carpet caddis. Yeah, but he wouldn't eat the, wouldn't eat it dry. They're nice fish in here too, big. But, uh, so I just sunk it, let it go down, let it skitter through there like an emerger and sure enough, there he is. Oh, nice fish. The beauty, especially yeah. off the soft water like that. Yeah, you gotta fight a little current. <laughs> Nice boat. Yeah, little you know, skittering carpet caddis. Skittering. <laughs> you know what I think it is? Look at his little tails, little. Oh yeah. I think they're shaping up. Like after the spawn, they're in here feeding. Oh, yeah. We saw that last year. Yeah. Remember they move in the soft water and they bulk up by eating emergers. Right. Yeah. Well, wow, there anything dead even floating. Yeah, we Yeah, because he's he's a little thinner then, right? Oh yeah. Still a nice fish though. Well, they're nice fish. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, there he yeah. goes. Especially when you can pick them off of the soft. I mean, it, it gives you satisfaction. Yeah. <laughs> to get them where they're real stealthy. Well, it's where the caddis are, so you got to go where the hatch is, right? It's exactly what we did. They learned. Yeah. Last year, same thing. They slid over way out of the main. Yeah. Well, what'd you think about the nymphing today? Oh, it's great. Hey, that's little. Caddis pupa or whatever. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah, the merger you tied up, it really worked. It was <laughs> well, good. the pupa are good. Like, that's what I find. If I, I tie a lot of pupa that we hang down lower, then I've got the emerger that's got a little more, you know, just a little more soft hackle to it because right. you're fishing in near the top. Usually when we use uh, slime line, we'll use an intermediate clear sink or even a swivel in on a dry. And then of course we have the dry. Yeah. But that pupa, you we've normally we go with the pheasant tail jig. Well, I thought I'd Change it up and show you that one. Well, we pumped the fish, yeah. saw them in there. He said, I'll tie some of those up and we yeah. use them. Got to match the hatch. Yeah, it did. Work good. But when you come out here, you know what? Got to take care because it is big water. Conserve the waters, and we'll see you next time we take a sport fishing on the fly. Have a good day.